You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, from Oregon High School, Daily Dodge TV, and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam present Beaver Dam High School Golden Beaver Boys Basketball. Tonight, it's the regular season finale. One last matchup in the Badger Large Conference as the Golden Beavers are on the road to take on the Oregon Panthers. Hi again, everybody. Mike Tronson with you inside the gym, and I'm joined on site by Aiden Voigt. He's my videographer and engineer for the Daily Dodge TV video stream. Jack Wilski is back at the 1430 ESPN Beaverdam Studios engineering the radio simulcast. Tonight's game is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM in Beaver Dam, and White Construction. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, on this Thursday night. Glad to have you aboard. As I mentioned, it's the final tune-up of the regular season for the Golden Beavers. One more tune-up before the postseason starts next week. And Beaver Dam, what a season it's been up to this point. They're 17-6 and six on the season, 8-5 and five in the Badger Large. Right now they are uh, tied for third in the Badger Large with Monona Grove. Won a key, a 12-1 conference mark at the top. Milton in second place right now at 10-3. But uh, it's been a good, uh, good year for the Golden Beavers as they are... Uh, Coming in, as I said, with those 17 victories. They've won their last two over DeForest and Monona Grove. That was after a, a brief two-game skid. Uh, the team is healthy right now. Uh, the uh, The roster is healthy, and uh, they're ready to go. They they found out their playoff fate this past weekend. Beaverdam earned a number two seed in their regional bracket. They get a bye in the opening round of the playoffs on Tuesday night. And they will host either number seven, Sauk Prairie, or number 10, Portage, a week from tomorrow night, Friday night, March 1st, 7 o'clock, at the BDHS Fieldhouse. Meanwhile, for Oregon, they are 13 and 10 on the year. They uh, come in with a 6 and 7 conference mark. They are right now in uh, fifth place in the league. The uh, Panthers actually have uh, one more regular season game left. Um, no, I beg your pardon. This is their finale as well. Uh, they earned a number six seed, or I beg your pardon, number eight seed in the uh, regional bracket, and they're going to host number nine seeded Madison East on Friday night, March 1st. And uh, so they're going to have a home game next week. Both these teams earning buys in the uh, first round of the WIAA playoffs, which for the boys, as we said, kick off next week, Tuesday. The uh, Panthers have struggled a bit as of late. They've lost three in a row and four out of their last five. Uh, these two teams last got together on January 11th up in Beaver Dam. Golden Beavers won that game 63-58, but they were down 17-3 at the start. So they rallied in that one. And uh, Beaver Dam led that night by JT Call with 19 points. Parker Stobie had 18 and uh, Jack Jens with 13. Meanwhile, Von Carvela, 22 to lead all scorers uh, in the game for the Panthers. And it was Grant Wolank with 10 in that uh, game back on January 11th. So the second meeting of the season for these two teams. And as we said, after tonight, it's on to the postseason. Right now, we're going to take a quick one-minute break. When we come back, you'll hear comments from Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam, right after this one-minute break on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of AirCare and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 
920-356-8860. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no-pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And we continue our pregame programming. We're back inside Oregon High School. Mike Tronson standing by once again with Tim Ladrin, head coach of the Golden Beavers. And Tim, one last tune-up, regular season finale tonight against Oregon. We'll talk about the Panthers in a second. Uh, you and I were talking off the air. Uh, your roster is healthy, but I guess the bench is going to be a little lighter tonight. So we want to wish uh, a couple of the assistant coaches uh, who can't be here tonight uh, well. Yeah, well, first, the, the good news, uh, we're excited for Coach Teets. Him and his wife, Marie, had a uh, baby boy, Luca, and so we're certainly uh, excited for him. And, um, you know, we're going to miss Coach Teets around here, and, and we knew Friday night was going to be his last game with us. And um, so we're certainly excited for, for Marie and, and Coach Teets and, and for little Luca. So that's pretty exciting. And then, yeah, Coach Call is uh, is out pretty sick with the flu, and um you know, I, we were kind of joking around on the bus on the way here, you know, we said it might not be much of a, you know, might not make much of a difference because Coach Call always says, I don't say anything, I don't, we don't do anything that he says anyway. So, <laughs> but no, I mean, he's obviously a huge loss eh, for us. And so we'll have to adapt on the, on the bench. We just got myself and, and Coach Baldessari and Coach Younger tonight. And that's okay. We'll, we'll get her figured out somehow. Well, congratulations again to the uh, Tietzes on the birth of yeah. Luca, and, and uh, get well soon, Mike. Uh, we're thinking of you right now. Um, as we look back on this season, and it's been a, a really good regular season for your boys. I know you're very proud of, yeah, of the sure. accomplishments. Mm -hmm. uh, what I, it, it's probably hard to put your finger on one or two things, but what do you what are you most proud of as you look back on the body of work here? Well, it all starts with our leadership, and our seniors have been fantastic. Uh, Jack, JT, and Cameron have been outstanding leaders on the floor and in the locker room and, and I'm so proud of those guys and uh, it's one of the best groups of leaders I've ever had and um, that's that's number one and you know you know, you know the old saying great teams aren't led by their coaches led by their players and and they, those guys have led, a, led our guys and I'm super proud of those guys um, you know and, and then I, you know I think we we've had a, a really we have an incredibly unselfish group um, Nobody really cares who gets the job done as long as we get it done. It's something we preach every year. Most years we get that out of our guys. You know, every once in a while we have some issues, but this year has been absolutely fantastic. The, 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 the unselfishness and, and the caring about each other and, and having each other's back. And, you know, we've had some injuries and some other things, and we've had other guys step up and, and play big roles. And, um, you know, at times we haven't missed much of a beat. So, obviously, you know, we've had a few, you know, setbacks here and there, but, um, for a team that was predicted sixth or seventh place in the Badger Conference, for us to be sitting tied for third going to the last game, uh, I'm awfully, awfully proud of these guys. They've, they've, they've done a lot, not just through the season, but the off season as well. And you got a number two seed going into the postseason, and that's, if anything, that's some validation of all the hard work. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, uh, Tosa West and us probably in that two, three seed. You know, I, I, they probably have an argument, um, but uh, we'll certainly take it. It is what it is. Um, you know, regardless, as you said, it's a great seed. It's a great spot to be. But, you know, we seeds are, are great and everything, but you still got to get the job done. And, uh, it, you know, it it's, you know, that piece starts on Friday night with soccer portage. It doesn't start with Saturday with Tosa West. You're going to have uh, quite a few days to sit after tonight because you don't play again until a week from tomorrow um, you know in one hand you could look at it and say well you know well, that's a long time to sit but is it nice to have some extra preparation time for you know getting ready for whoever you might see down the road here yeah we'll have some extra time to, to see you know to work on you know both teams for Friday you know before Tuesday rolls around maybe get a little sneak peek at Saturday um, you know we, we've changed some things in how we do some stuff over the years a couple years ago we took uh, when we when we won the regional two years ago 
um, you know, we took some time to, to look at everybody, you know, for, for a couple days. And I think what happened there is we were really well prepared, obviously, on Friday night for that Slinger game, but it made us made that pre preparation for Saturday for Grafton, the regional final, that much easier. And we'll kind of handle that that way. It, it does give us a little bit of time to do that, um, you know, but you always worry about, especially to start Friday, the, the playoff nerves and the jitters and, and you know, kind of getting into playoff form. Well, one more regular season game, as we said. We can't look past Oregon tonight here. And uh, you beat them the first time. Uh, you had a lead at half, and they kind of made a push in the second half, but uh, you got uh, several guys in double figures were able to hold them off. What do you do to make it two in a row over the Panthers? Yeah, and we talked a lot about this week about this is this is priority number one. We'll worry about the playoffs starting tomorrow, not tomorrow but uh, this is priority number one. We want to get one here. This is not like a throwaway game. For us, this is something we, we have a focus on here, and I think our guys are dialed in. And remember, they got out to a 17-3 to lead on us to start the game last time, which is, unfortunately has been a habit for us, you know, this year. Um, we need, obviously, we need to get off to a better start. And then, you know, when you talk about Oregon, Vaughn Carvalho is obviously the first guy. And it, is, he just flies out of the gym, dunks everywhere. I think he had nine block shots against us last time. And so you got to worry about him on both ends of the floor, but then you can't let other guys go. I mean, you you know, uh, you, you can't, you know, they got a lot of other very capable guys that can shoot the ball, uh, can score in different ways. And so we've got to handle everything there on the defensive end and offensively. We've got to keep doing what we've been doing. You know, hopefully we can avoid the, the you know, the first five minute drought that we seem to have uh, quite a bit this year and, and try to dial that in for us. Well, Tim, it's been an honor for me to cover this team all season long, and uh, I'm looking forward to tonight and the postseason. Thanks again for all you do for me, and uh, good luck to you and the boys tonight. Yeah, it's great having you guys here. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. All right, that's Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam. We'll step aside back for more right after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. The Beaver Dam Unified School District identifies a school of the month during the school year. A shout out to the students, staff, and families of this month's school community being recognized, Jefferson Elementary. Back inside Oregon High School, Mike Tronson with you for Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Agent 00 Voigt is on site. And my videographer and engineer, Jack Wilski, back at the radio station tonight, engineering our simulcast. It's the Beaver Dam Boys and Oregon Badger Large Conference game, the final regular season game for both squads. Both teams will get a bye in the first round of the WIAA playoffs next Tuesday and will open up their postseason runs on Friday. Beaver Dam is in Division Two, Oregon, of course, in Division One. But right now we'll pause, we'll keep it here as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
Our national anthem here at Oregon High School. Let's give you the starting lineups first for Beaver Dam, coached by Tim Ladron. They'll start at a guard, E.J. Salatel, a six foot two inch sophomore, along with J.T. Call, a six one senior, and Parker Stobie, five nine, and a junior. Forwards include Jack Jens, a six three senior, along with Cameron Mendoza, six three, and a senior. So again for Beaver Dam, it's E.J. Salatel, J.T. Call, Parker Stobie. Jack Jens and Cameron Mendoza getting the start tonight. Now the starters for Oregon and the Panthers are coached by Chris Siebert. The all-guard lineup, it'll be Henry Kreckman, six foot six inch senior, along with Caden Diaz, a six three senior, Grant Wolink, six three senior, Caden Dixon, a senior at six feet tall. And rounding out the starters for Oregon is Von Carvala. Six foot six inch sophomore. So again, those starters for Oregon Henry Kreckman, Caden Diaz, Grant Wolink, Caden Dixon, and Von Carvala. Von Carvala, he is the number 11 rated player in the class of 2026. He already has one offer that I know of, college offer from Northern Michigan. And uh, he averages 24 points a game. He can fly. He can flat out fly. He is going to be a lot of fun to watch tonight, among others that are going to be out there on this court. Don't forget, you can send me an email tonight. Sports at DailyDodge.com is where you'll find me. As always, sports at DailyDodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. You know by now how to do it. And we'd love to hear from you tonight. We'll give you a shout-out as our broadcast moves along. For those of you listening on radio that can't see it, Beaver Dam in the first half will go left to right, and that means Oregon will go right to left across your radio dial or your Daily Dodge TV video screen. Oregon in white jerseys and shorts, orange numbers and orange and black trim. Beaver Dam tonight, they've got the traveling black jerseys and shorts, the gold numbers, and the green and gold trim. So here we go, just about set to get this thing underway. Cameron Mendoza jumps it at center against Henry Kreckman. And we are just about ready for basketball here in Oregon. There's the whistle. Ball up in the air. Tap is going to be controlled by Beaver Dam. Parker Stobie has it. He'll bring it across the timeline. And here we go. As he sends it right side for E.J. Salata. Looking into the right block. Call. Nice backdoor pass. Mendoza wide open on the left doorstep for the first two of the game. 2-0. Beaver Dam leads. And what an assist. Great pass from Call to find a wide open Mendoza. All right. 20 seconds gone by. 2-0 Beaver Dam. And Oregon, there's a traveling call on Caden Dixon. And that turnover will give it to Beaver Dam. 26 seconds gone. It's 2-0 in favor of the Golden Beavers as they'll bring it back the other way. Their second offensive possession. This is Call. Working to the top of the key. Puts on the brakes. Gives it out to Jens high on the left. Return feed to Mendoza, top of the silo. Mendoza looking left, now looks right, finds call high on the right. Man-to-man D here for Oregon. And pass into lane, Mendoza kicks it out, call, fakes a three. And through traffic, now floats one up. It's off the back iron, no good, and the rebound pulled down by Carvala. He's off to the races. Carvala fouled. Looks like they're going to get Jens here. And that'll be his first of the evening, first team foul. And it's going to be Oregon basketball. Carvalho to inbound. Baseline to our left finds Kreckman. Goes over to the left side. Wolank now. Wolank back the other way. Now a lob pass taken by Caden Diaz. Diaz one hands it to Carvalho. He'll try a step back three. Bullseye. Vaughn Carvalho from the top of the silo. Hits that triple and it's 3-2 in favor of Oregon. Carvalho 27.7% from behind the arc. He averages 24 a game. 6.7 rebounds and about three assists per game as well. Outstanding player, among others. Call fakes a three. Here's an outstanding player. Call kicks it out. Jens will try a three. That rainbow three did not draw iron, and Salatel could not save it from going out of bounds, so it'll go back to the Panthers with 16-24 left to play in the first half. We're just underway. 3-2, Oregon with the lead and possession. And this is Wolink. Grant Wolink gives it to Kreckman. He'll try a left elbow three. Got it. Henry Kreckman from downtown Oregon. It's 6-2 Panthers. 
He's a, about a 29% three-point shooter and buries that one. He averages seven a game. Three for Cole, and he gets one. JT getting into the action. As it's raining down threes early, Call with his first trifecta. There's a steal. Back the other way. JT, right side, layup, got it. Back-to-back -back buckets by JT. It's 7-6, to six. Beaver Dam in, a, in a, the blink of an eye. Two minutes, 20 seconds gone here in the first half. There's a shot in the lane. Oh, Carvala. Made it look easy. Vaughn Carvala up to five points. And it is now 8-7 in favor of the Panthers. Call for three left side. That's no good off the rim. Kreckman has the defensive rebound. And he'll work it back across the timeline. 2.45 into the game. Carvalho, long cross-court feed. Wolink leaps to get it, finds Dixon in the corner, and Dixon up to the top of the key now for Wolink. Wolink guarded heavily by Call, spins into the lane against Call, kicks it out. Kreckman open on the elbow for three, too strong off the rim, rebound. There's a fight for it, and we have got what? Jump ball? Yes, they call it tie-up. The arrow says it belongs to the Panthers with 14.57 to go in the opening stanza, and right now it is a one-point game in favor of of Oregon. And up, oh, there's a turnover. Steele, call, comes away with the ball off the inbounds play and fires it left side. Salatel, NBA three, high off the back rim, no. Kreckman the box out and rebound, took it away from Jens. Throws it ahead in transition. Here's a leaner, no good, but Grant Wolink got fouled and he is gonna head to the free throw line. First email tonight. Go Beavers, Skyler, Christine, and Lonnie all checking in. The Eberleys are watching, and they never miss. They never miss a broadcast. They are loyal viewers. Appreciate you guys. Hope you're having a good Thursday night. And the first free throw is no good for Grant Wolink. He averages seven a game, 63.3% free throw shooter. Seven rebounds, a couple of assists per game. Foul, by the way, was on Mendoza, his first, team's second. One more coming up. Wolink. Got it. Nine to seven. Now substitution for Beaver Dam is Max Lidke. 6'3", junior, checks on for head coach Tim Ladron. Another email. Hey, Mike, tuned in on Farwell Road, cheering on the old alma mater and our nephews JT Call and Cruz Rody. Says, we know you'll do your usual MVB, most valuable broadcaster's job. As the shot is up, no good, and the rebound for Oregon. A sincere get well soon to Mike Call as well. That's from my neighbor and good friend Greg Style. Here's a three for Wolang. Arcing rainbow shot is no good. Rebound went out of bounds. It's going to go back to Beaver Dam. Greg and Julie Style. I, I can't forget Julie. Greg's better half. Both checking in tonight. And, yes, Mike Call. If you're tuned in, I hope you feel better soon, my friend. Get well soon. Mike, one of the assistant coaches, and he is under the weather. And Mike, we're thinking of you. We are thinking of you. Hope you're feeling better. All right, just about four minutes gone. It's 9-7 in favor of Oregon. Beaverdam has the rock, though. In the right corner, Parker Blank. He had just checked in. 5-11 sophomore gives it to Salatel. Pass off the fingertips of Call, stolen. And then a pass ahead, trying to spring Carvalho was tipped, but Carvalho caught up to it. And now here's Kreckman into the lane. Kicks it out, left corner, three ball. Yes, that is Nicholas Jacobs, six-foot sophomore. He just come in at the last dead ball. And another three for the Panthers, who lead it 12-7. Five-point advantage, 13-35 to go in the half. Call from way downtown. Oh, JT, not bashful about that one. He's got eight points. It's 12 to 10. Beaver down within two. Look out, Carvalho falling down as he went through traffic. Kicks it out. And a three ball, no good for Jacob. Rebound. And that's Lidke that got it for the Golden Beavers. 12 to 10. Beaver Dam trails by two, but they've got the rock. As we're just about five minutes into the game. Salatel fakes a three to the free throw line. Bobbled it, got it back, kicks it out. There's Max. Lidke looking around, goes to Blank. Blank fakes a three, top of the key. Back to EJ, going off a screen. Spins, free throw line jumper, book it. EJ Salatel made a tough shot look easy. We are tied at 12 apiece. 12.49 to go. Opening stanza of play here at Oregon High School. Last regular season game of the, of the year. Playoffs opening up next week. And this is Jacob again. 
On the left elbow, guarded by Salatel. Jeff Freund had checked in for Beaver Dam, 6'1 junior. He's playing defense on Carvel, and Carvel had missed the shot. Off the rim, Salatel got the rebound. Here's EJ up the left wing side. A little hesitation move. Kicks it up to Call, fakes a three. Now back out to Blank for three. That's off the backboard, no good. And Freund grabbed the rebound, and there's going to be a whistle and a foul called on the Panthers, which is going to be their first of the evening. And it's called on Jacob. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. If you want to send an email tonight, we'd love to hear from you. Again, a special shout-out to uh, Beaver Dam assistant coach Andrew Teets, his wife Marie, on the birth the other day of their son, Luca. Congratulations to the Teetses. Luca, was he going to be, what, Beaver Dam High School class of, uh, let's see, 2042, <laughs> something like that? Congratulations to the Teetses. All right, ball loose and turned over by Beaver Dam. Will Schmidt, 6'3", sophomore, had checked in for Oregon. He came away with the ball. Nolan Erferth, 6'1", sophomore, is also out there. I think we got all the subs in on both sides. Freund tipped a pass, but it was saved by Schmidt. And here's Kreckman, Henry Kreckman, out to the right side. Diaz on the drive, back to Kreckman. He's above the free throw line, puts on the brakes, gives it to Jacob. He'll try a three. Off the rim, no. Rebound, Freund. And this is Jeff Freund back into the front court. Stops near the right wing side. Bounce pass cross court. Taken by Blank, and then Blank got a little indecisive, and he traveled. Speaking of uh, heartwarming things, we're talking about the Teetses and, and the birth of their son. I saw something that just warmed my heart before the game. Coach Tim Ladron, his daughter Maddie, flew into town to surprise him, and I was standing next to him when she walked up to him and gave him a big hug tonight. So he was... Uh, very emotional as one would expect, and there's a shot no good for Diaz, and on the rebound, we got a foul on Oregon. We're gonna go the other way, but we had just finished our pregame interview. I was uh, standing next to him, and uh, Maddie came up, and he couldn't believe it. He says, what are you doing here? But she said, I came to support you, came to surprise you, and so uh, there was a big hug, and uh, that was a neat moment. That was a neat moment. She uh, came into town for a couple of days, and uh, Dad loved it. Kind of melted your, your heart a little bit there. 10.53 to go, first half. Back to basketball. Stolby gives it to Blank. Now to Salatel. Stops free throw line extended. Now back up top. Here's Freund. Freund going against Jacob. Bounce pass out to Salatel. He's to the free throw line. Elevates. Jumper off the back rim. No. Stolby has an offensive board. Finds Mendoza, and it's a reload for the Golden Beavers. We're tied at 12. And we are... Uh, ten and a half minutes away from intermission. Freund, out right of the circle, into the block area. Ran into a double team, kicks it out. Stobie right corner three, off the rim, it's no good. And leaping for the rebound, Wolang. Ahead now to Diaz, Caden Diaz, left side off the glass, count it. Caden Diaz makes it 14-12, he breaks the tie. Panthers lead by a deuce. Ten minutes and change left to go, first half. Stobie trying to slow things down a little bit just inside the timeline. Pass over to Blank. Blank. Bounce pass into the left corner, and that's Salatel. One handed out to Stobie. He'll try another three. Line drive three is good. Parker Stobie. His first bucket is from behind the arc. 15 14. Beaver down by one. Jacob wide open left corner three. Oh, you can't leave him open. He just buried another one. He's got two triples, and he was wide open. There wasn't a defender in the same zip code, and he says, I'll spot up for three, and he drained it. And now at the other end, there's Blank missing a three from the top of the key. Here come the Panthers off the miss. Look out, leaner. That's not going to go for Nolan Erferth. Rebound for Blank, and the Beavers have it. Down by two, 17 to 15. Freund in the right corner, spinning towards the block, puts a shot off the glass, no good, too strong. Now at the other end, here's Diaz. Near the free throw line, kicks it to Jacob. Diaz set a screen, Jacob didn't take a three though. Goes back to Jacob, looking down low. That pass, Erferth out to Jacob. Shot no good from the corner. Offensive board, put back, reverse layup is good. And that is Ryan Dins. He had just come on a little while ago. Ryan Dins, 6'1 junior, and he makes it 19 to 15 in favor 
of Oregon. Here's a shut up, good. E.J. Salatel draining that one. 19-17, Beaver Dam within two, and now it's a four point game. As Caden Diaz with a nice baseline drive on the right side goes in for a layup there. Here's Mendoza, top of the arc. Clock running, eight minutes to go first half. Layup on the left side, Parker Blank. Will score, 21-19 Oregon. At the other end, there's a shot shorted by Erferth. And Mendoza got the rebound. It was knocked out of his hands and out of bounds, but Oregon was the last to touch it. So Beaver Dam will keep possession. And another email here, Go Beavers, watching from Mount Calvary. Jeff Freund's grandparents, regular viewers on Daily Dodge TV. Thanks for the email. Sports at DailyDodge.com if you'd like to chime in. 7.42 and counting left until halftime. Salatel left corner pass taken there by Jackson Ladron. He just checked in for Beaver Dam. 5'11 freshman, coach's son. And there is a foul as they were trying to feed a cutting JT call in the lane and he got bumped. Erferth picked up the foul, his first, team's third. Here's call on the baseline to our right, inbounding. And boy, that's miscommunication there, I guess, because he threw it where nobody was and nobody could recover for Beaver Dam. I'm not sure if he thought one of his teammates was going to break that way or what, but that's a turnover. Oregon has it back, leading by a deuce. Panthers 21, Golden Beavers 19, 720 to go first half. Been an entertaining first half here at Oregon. Carvala to the right side, three ball on the way. It is too strong for Wolink. And Call has the rebound. JT flying through traffic. Shot was partially blocked and saved from going out of bounds. Here come the Panthers. Carvala up the right wing side near the elbow. Sends it up top of the key for Diaz. Diaz pass down low to the baseline. Kick right back out. And that was Mason Hoffer who just checked in. Giving it to Carvala and then a little touch pass. And Carvala tips up the miss by his teammate Vaughn Carvala now with seven points. And it's 23 to 19 as the Panthers are back in front by four. 627 counting left to play in this opening stanza. Long three, EJ, no good. Rebound, Call was going for it. Ladron was going for it. There was a whistle. And Erferth just picked up his second personal fourth team foul. And substitution here as Henry Kreckman comes in, replacing Nolan Erferth, who's going to sit down with those two personal fouls. Call gets it in. There's Salatel right wing up to the center circle over Ladron. Bat to call for a three on the elbow. Oh, splash! JT with a triple. 26 to 19. Beg your pardon. That was... It should be 23 to 22, right? Or 23 to 19. <laughs> they had the scoreboard wrong. That's all right. We'll, we'll fix it here. 20, they, they gave the bucket to the wrong side. They had, yeah, no, it is 23-22. Okay. Yeah, Aiden had it right on our scoreboard. The, the scoreboard here in the gym was wrong for a moment, and I went with that, and I shouldn't have. So my bad, but it's 23-22. There you go. After the three-by call a moment ago. Aiden, you, uh, you didn't make a mistake. All right, this is Carvala. Pump fake. Another pump fake. He'll try a three. No good. Missed it wide right. Jen's playing defense on him. Rebound Mendoza gives it to JT. Five and a half to go until the buzzer. 23-22. Call driving right side. Found a seam and he goes in. Finishes with a right hand. 13 points for Call in this game. And it was 24-23, Beaver Dam, but now a little shot in. 
That one by Mason Hoffer. He's got his first two. 25-24 Oregon. Stobie kicks it out. Jens for three in the left corner. Rainbow three is no good. And the rebound tipped by Stolby back to Jens. It's an offensive board and a reload for the Golden Beavers who trail by one. 4.45 to go first half. EJ top of the key to the free throw line on the dribble. Now finds Cameron Mendoza. Right elbow. He's going to kind of leisurely trot to the far side. Bounce pass to a cutting call and call. Got fouled. That was a great pass by Cam. And a nice cut by JT. And JT is going to go to the free throw line. JT call. What a senior season. 17.4 a game. 76.6% from the free throw line. Seven rebounds. Five assists per game. And the first free throw, right on cue as I compliment him, the first free throw rattles off the rim, no good. A couple of substitutions here before Call gets to shoot a second time. Next one's on the way, that's good. So JT gets one out of two, 14 points in the game for JT. We're tied at 25. All even, four and a half to go until the break. Carvala, top of the key, going against Freund. Carvala, spinning into the lane, shot is up, shot is in, oh my. Vaughn Carvala, nine points now. 27-25 Panthers. Blank for three, bullseye from the right wing. Parker Blank, knocking down a triple, 20. Let's see, it's now 28-27 as the scoreboard was a little slow, but that time I didn't get fooled. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Is that the old saying? Shot no good for Carvalho on the rebound. Call, throws it ahead. Now Blank, giving it back to JT. Return feed to Blank on the elbow, out left of the circle. Blank, I should say, call, one-hands it to Cameron Mendoza. He'll try a three at the top of the key. Went off the top of the backboard. Blank got the offensive board. Out to call for three. Yes! JT pumping his fist. A triple. And it is now 31-27 Beaver Dam. And all because of an offensive rebound, Call was able to drain that. Four-point Beaver Dam lead, 318 to go in the first half. Here's Kreckman. Nice defense by Mendoza on the baseline. Lob pass to Carvala because Kreckman was falling out of bounds. Carvala back up high on the right. Kreckman will try a three up there, and he got it. Henry Kreckman with his second triple. 31 to 30. Beaverdam leads by one. Golden Beavers have the ball. 256 and counting left in the opening half. Here's a drive, and that's JT. It looks like we have a foul going to be called here. This email says, Can't believe this is the Beavers' last game of the season. It's been a great joy listening to the broadcast all season. It's a small world. Cam Mendoza's cousin's fiance is my dentist in Eagle, Wisconsin. His name is Luke Bjorklund from Reedsburg. He was a football star and hockey star for Reedsburg. Can't wait for next season. That's from Rick Schmied. Rick checking in from McWanago, and we have a timeout called. Timeout brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings. Under the red awning in downtown Beaver Dam. It's a 30-second timeout. We're going to keep it here. Let's get to some more emails. And uh, let's see what we have here. We've got uh, keep up the great work, Mike. Love watching the streams. Also, Thank you for a shout-out the other week. Yeah, thanks for all you do. That's from uh, Corey Blank. That's Parker Blank's dad, Corey. Corey, you are very welcome. Thank you very much. Do appreciate it. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, cheering on the Beaver Dam boys after watching a great JV game. Finish strong. Long live Greg and Julie style. <laughs> That's from Lily and Brad Rohde. I tell you what, you got to love it. And let's see what else we have here. Uh, Brett and Jody Recheck watching from the living room. Coach Ladrin must have given JT the green light on the threes with Dad absent tonight. Says, uh, thank you, Mike and the crew and all the sponsors for making this possible. Go Beavers! That's Brett and Jody Recheck checking in tonight. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. If you'd like to send us an email. 2.45 left and in the first half. And that was Caden Diaz that just banked home a shot. He's got six points now. 32-31. What was that? All right, 32-31 in favor of the Panthers. 
Pass into the right block, JT. Head and shoulder fake, and he scores. Ah, the old shampoo move for JT. It's the head and shoulders. JT calls up to 19 points. Are you kidding me? No, we're not. 33-32, BD by one. 2.09 and counting left in the opening half. This is Caden Dixon. And gives it to Nicholas Jacob, who missed a long three from the right side. Call has the rebound. A minute 49 and counting left until halftime. Call's pass intercepted. Picked off by Dixon. And he'll underhand it to Diaz, and Diaz trots it the other way. Finds Kreckman, right of the circle. Mendoza guarding him. Kreckman, they fell down. He got tangled up with uh, a defender, and there's going to be a foul here. This is on JT. His first, team's third. Comes with a minute and 34 seconds left until halftime. Lob pass in, Kreckman. Guarded there by Mendoza. Hook shot over Mendoza. It's no good. And the rebound for Stoby. Here comes Parker. Parker. Off a screen set by Mendoza, sends it to Cam, and Mendoza now directing traffic on the right wing side. He's guarded by Kreckman. Bounce pass towards the right block. Jens corrals it, sends it up top. Stoby fakes a long three. Now to the left corner. That pass goes to Mendoza, sends it up to call. Around the horn right side. Salatel will try a three. No good off the rim. Kreckman has the rebound, tiptoes the baseline, and gives it to Vaughn Carvala. Carvala. A little hesitation move going right side and through traffic and actually around traffic and he goes in for a layup. 34-33 Oregon, 45 seconds and counting left in the opening half. One point game, Beaverdam has the ball but trailing by one. Jens out to Stoby left elbow. Back to call, NBA three for JT. High off the rim, no good. Rebound, Kreckman leaps to get the defensive carom. 24 seconds and counting left in the half. 34-33, Oregon by one. This is Diaz. Top of the key, guarded by Salatel. And now Dixon giving it to Carvala. Carvala being hassled by JT. Carvala had to compose himself as he's bobbing. And then Cole stripped him. He just stripped him. Four seconds, three. JT got tripped up. Clock stopped with 1.7 seconds left in the half. JT got tripped up. And they are going to call a foul on Oregon with under two seconds to play in the half. JT's going to go to the line. The foul was called on Kreckman, his first, team's seventh. So here's call. At the charity stripe, front end of the bonus. Good. JT Call has 20 points in the first half. And make it 21. As he drains a pair, 35-34, Bieber Dam by one. 1 1.7 seconds left in the half. Baseball pass inbounds is picking by Carvel. He fires it up. Oh, and he hits a three. A buzzer beating three by Carvela to end the half. And Oregon goes into the locker room up a deuce. What a wildly entertaining first half here tonight. And at the break, it is Oregon 37 and Beaver Dam 35. Stay with us. We're going to take a four-minute break. We'll be back in four minutes for our halftime report after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Cheer. Now cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it is commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. 
Hometown Glass and Improvement online at hometownglass.com. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. As a realtor, there is such joy in driving past one of our clients' houses that is now the place they call home. Be it a first-time home buyer, a relocation to our community, or someone upsizing or downsizing. We are passionate about the place you call home and meeting your wants and needs each step of the way. We sell the houses, you make it a home. Questions? Give us a call. 920-219-9212. Kladowski Real Estate, your trusted real estate advisors. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all Beaver Dam athletes. While at home watching high school sports, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy comfort studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. The winter weather can play havoc on your hands and hair. Fear not, the folks at Wonder Nails and Spa has just a ticket for you. Call 887-4374 and let them pamper you. Let them chase away those winter blues. Let's talk hair. Long, beautiful hair. Shine and glint. Whoa, 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 I digress. The team at Cost Cutters will put a shimmer and shine to your mood and their retail products are the best in the business. Call 885-0437 today. That's why you hear everyone say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center and you should too. Here at Pizza Ranch, we'd like to thank our Swedish friends for bringing the buffet to America. They called it the smorgasbord, but it was a success anyway. So we started our own buffet and loaded it up with pizza, chicken, sides, salads, and cactus bread. And you can even request any pizza you want anytime you visit. We call it Buffet Your Way, because smorgasbord your way, well, that doesn't rhyme at all. Pizza Ranch. Mmm, mmm. Check out your local Pizza Ranch in Beaver Dam, Watertown, or Wapan, or check out pizzaranch.com. At Preferred Dental Partners, our core values are more than just something we put on our wall. There's something we live out. Core value number two is the wow experience. This means that from the moment you walk in the door until the time you leave, we want to provide an experience for our patients that is unlike anything you've had before. There are lots of choices of dentists, and we never want anyone to feel they have to be here. We want them to choose to be here because they feel heard, welcomed, and well cared for. If you want to see what the wow experience is about, call or text Preferred Dental Partners today. time here at Oregon High School and at the break in this Badger Large Conference boys basketball tilt. It's a tight one. We've got the Panthers on top of the Golden Beavers. It's Oregon 37 and Beaver Dam 35. Our game tonight brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM in Beaver Dam, and White Construction. Well, don't forget to tune in to the monthly Let's Talk radio show with Superintendent Mark DeStefano on the third Thursday of the month at 11.10 a.m., on 95.3 WBEV, the Beaver Dam Unified School District, guiding students, empowering futures. All right, so a two-point game at the break as we look at the first half scoring. 
for Oregon. They were paced by Vaughn Carvala. 14 points for Vaughn Carvala, including two from behind the arc. Three players had six points each. Henry Kreckman with a pair of threes. He finished the half with six. Caden Diaz had six points, and so did Nicholas Jacob, a pair of threes for him as he finished the half with six. Two points for Mason Hoffer, another two for Ryan Dins, and rounding out the scoring, Grant Wolang chipped in a free throw. He finished the half with one. Meanwhile, on the Beaver Dam side, how about J.T. Call? J.T. Call not only leads Beaver Dam, but he leads all scorers in the game. 21 points in the first half, including four three-point baskets. Parker Blank had five, including one from downtown. E.J. Salatel with four. It was Parker Stobie chipping in a three, so he finished the half with three, and Cameron Mendoza had a deuce to round out the scoring for Beaver Dam. 37-35 at the break. Again, this is the final regular season game for these two squads. They both get buys in the first round of the WIAA playoffs next Tuesday, and both of these teams will open up their postseason runs a week from tomorrow night, Friday night, March 1st. Beaver Dam's in Division Two, Oregon in Division One, And that's just around the corner. That's what's next after tonight. But we've got an entertaining second half coming up for you. Let's take a break. We'll get to some emails when we come back, but we're going to take a three-minute break on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. It's the President's Day sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed with a last call for all you Hemi engine muscle car enthusiasts. The Hemi engine is going away, but we got a couple of beauties that just arrived for some lucky buyers. Take five grand off a brand new 23 Dodge Charger Daytona RT and B5 Blue or a Challenger RT TA package in the beautiful and iconic Plum Crazy. For you SUV buyers, Jeep Grand Cherokee Limiteds with the black appearance package, only $46,678. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our Silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for Your Home for the best sales, service, and selection. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. We are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Second half getting underway. In the second half tonight, Beaver Dam's going to go right to left. 
And Oregon will move left to right across your daily Dodge TV screen or your radio dial if you're listening on radio. Mike Tronson with you at Oregon High School, joined by Aiden Voigt. Jack Wilski back at the 1430 ESPN studios tonight. 37-35, Oregon leads, but Beaverdam inbounds to start the second half. Again, they work it from right to left. And here we go as Parker Stoby fires it to E.J. Salatil. Back to the top of the key. Call's going to try a three, and he missed that one off the rim. Jen's trying to get the rebound, and Kreckman takes it away from him as they were both fighting for it. Now Carvala takes an outlet feed, sends it to the top of the key. Kreckman going against Mendoza into the lane, ran into Cam, and then lob pass out to Wolink. Now feeds Caden Diaz. Diaz over to Kreckman, right of the circle. He's into the lane. Lob pass, almost intercepted, and a reverse layup by Carvala. And Vaughn Carvala is up to 16 points. The lead is up to four, 39-35 in favor of Oregon. Opening minute of play, second half. Here's Mendoza. Right corner, looking around, now drives out of there. Mendoza giving it to Salatel. Salatel off the screen, going right baseline. Blocking foul going to be called here. On the Panthers, and I promise we get to some emails. This one says, Mike, who was the famous Oregon basketball player that wore number zero? He must have been outstanding. I see they retired his number at center court. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Watching from home, John and Teresa Sharkey checking in tonight. Mendoza for three, too strong. Offensive board put back, that won't go for EJ, and Kreckman has the rebound. Thanks for the email, by the way. I like that one. We'll get to some more here in just a second. Sports at DailyDodge.com is where you'll find us tonight, as always. And a hook, little shot in the lane, Wolink. Making it 41-35, just like that six-point Oregon lead. A minute and 25 seconds gone here in the second half. This is Jens above the free throw line, underhands it out beyond the arc for Mendoza. Cam's at the top of the key. To Stoby for a long three on the elbow, bullseye! Parker Stoby. His second three. Nothing cheap about that one. 41-38. Golden Beavers are within a triple now. And there's a pass off the fingertips of Carvala out of bounds. It's a turnover. And it will go back to the Golden Beavers. This email says, Mike, the golden sports voice of Dodge County. Oh, you're too kind. Always a pleasure to listen. Says, you make it seem like we're in the gym with you. Go BD boys. And that's from Dan Hallman, the legendary Dan Hallman checking in. I've known Dan since... Pretty much day one when I moved to Beaver Dam all those years ago, 1997. Yep, yeah, call got stripped. Wolang sends it ahead. Here's Carvala through traffic. Carvala, little pass to Kreckman, and Kreckman on the left doorstep scores. It is 43 38. So a five point Panthers lead. But we're uh, oh, two minutes, 20 seconds into the second half. Long ways to go on this one. Three balls on the way, too strong for EJ. And Kreckman the rebound and fires it ahead to Carvala. Carvala, right of the circle, looking into the block. There's a turnaround shot off the glass. Won't go for Dixon. And we had a foul called, I believe, as they were fighting for the rebound. Going to go on Beaver Dam. This email says, Coach Teets and new baby Luca are supporting the boys. Keep playing hard. Coach Teets, Andrew Teets, his wife Marie, welcomed their son Luca the other day. Congratulations, Coach, to you and your Wife on the birth of Luca. There's a three, no good for Carvel. The top of the key rebound for Stoby. Wonderful news. Hope that uh, that Luca and you both are doing great. And there is a drive and a bucket by EJ Salatel. EJ averages 16 and a half a game. 40% three uh, three point shooter. 70% for the line. He's having an outstanding season. And a bucket there, and then Carvala answers at the other end with a drive of his own. Carvala is up to 18 points, so the score right now is 45 to 40 in favor of the Panthers. Beaverdam has the ball. They're within five, 14-42 to go in the ball game. Jens driving, bounce pass to the right corner, three balls on the way, too strong for Blank. Rebound tipped, Stoby to Blank, Blank layup counted, and a foul. Oh, the Parker brothers combined for that one. Stoby tipped the offensive rebound to Blank, and Blank goes in for an and one. Oh, my goodness. That was incredible. 45-42, and before the free throw, we've got a timeout. Full timeout, 
Brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings in Beaverdam. We'll take a one-minute break. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care in Beaverdam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Cheer. Now cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it is commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. As we come back to action, Parker Blank at the line to shoot an and one. He's a 73% free throw shooter, averages eight and a half a game. Free throw is no good, rebound for Kreckman. Blank a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists per game. Parker is a sophomore, he's had a good year. 45-42, Panthers by three, they've got possession. As we're not quite four minutes in to the second half. Long way to go, as I mentioned. Been tight pretty much throughout. And I think they're going to get blank for contact on Ryan Dins down in the corner. So it's going to be Caden Diaz to inbound. The exact rebounding stat, the exact rebounding stats in front of me, but He's had quite a few in this one. 13 and a half minutes to go in the game. Three ball, top of the key. Yes. That is Caden Diaz. And he knocks down a tray. 50 to 42. And a floater's up, no good. Stoby got his own rebound, kicks it to the corner. Right side, Salatel up to Mendoza, left side. Now Jen's in the corner, takes the pass, goes into the lane. Ran into a double team, and we got a foul on Oregon. Largest lead of the game for the Panthers. It's at 8, 50 to 42. The foul was on Nolan Erferth, his third, team's third. Blank to inbound on the baseline to my left, finds Salatel. Salatel towards the block, puts a shot up over the defender. It's off the rim, no good, and the rebound for Wolang. We're five minutes into the second half. Here's a drive and a shot. No good off the rim for Diaz. Rebound. Beaverdam's got it. Salatel leading the pack ahead. Finds call. Underhands it back to EJ. Now to JT again as they go around the horns. Stoby to Cameron Mendoza. Left sideline. There's Cam. Right-handed dribble to the free throw line. Hesitation move. Into the lane he goes. Now puts on the brakes. Gives it to Salatel. He was bumped by Dins. Another foul here on the Panthers. For Dins, that's his first and the team's fourth. Noah Lazowski, six foot senior, just checked in for head coach Chris Siebert. And here is Stoby off the inbounds pass from Call. Stoby left of the circle out to Salatel at the top of the key for three and EJ. He got it. Timeout. 30-second timeout brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings. They're located in downtown Beaverdam. We have 12-25 left to play in the ballgame. And the score is Oregon 50, Beaverdam 45. We're going to keep it right here. Another email that just came in. Awesome game. Go Beavers. And a shout-out to EJ here in Oregon, inside the field house. That's from Grandma and Grandpa. And I was talking to him before the game. And uh, they... Uh, are uh, at every game, pretty much. They don't miss. And uh, we always like hearing from them and all of you. 
sports at dailydodge.com. You still have time to send us an email tonight if you haven't done so already. Don't be bashful. We won't uh, embarrass you too much. 12.25 to go in the game. 50 to 45. Panthers on top of the Golden Beavers by five. And Oregon inbounding after that 30 second timeout. Beaver Dam has used two timeouts. They've got three left. Oregon has four remaining. Three ball on the way. No good for Diaz. Rebound. Call secures it. And back the other way. Fires it. EJ right side for three. Got it. Oh, right in front of his own bench. EJ with another three. He's got a dozen points now. Eight alone here in the second half, 50 to 48. Beaver Dam has closed the gap to two with a 6-0 run. And Carvala bobbled it but saved it. Now fires it to Dins, right corner, sends it up top. Diaz around the horn they go, left side. There's Wolank looking on the left doorstep. Pass, shot is up. No good, and the rebound for the Golden Beavers. They've got a chance to tie or take the lead with a three ball. Salatel for three in the lead. It's no good. He missed it short. Call the rebound. Fires it right back to EJ. Up to Mendoza, over to Call. Left side, he's going to go baseline. Up to Cam, right side. Top of the key for three. Stobie's shot was blocked by Carvala. They throw it ahead. And Mendoza got back. Carvala banks it off the window to himself in the two-handed flush. Oh, wow. 52-48. Oregon and Carvala throwing it off the glass to himself and then dunking it home. And the crowd loved that and we've got a whistle. And an offensive foul, maybe an illegal screen on the Golden Beavers. So it's gonna go back to the Panthers. Yeah, the Oregon student section's right down below us here. And they were hooting and hollering after that one. Woo! I said he's the number 11 rated player in the class of 2026. Yeah, he's good. Been a fun game. Down to 10.43 remaining, four point lead. Now Carvalho for three. Oh, he buries another one. Vaughn Carvalho. 11 points in the half, 25 in the game, 55-48, back to a seven-point lead for the Panthers. Just call. Looking to Mendoza, left door, underhands it out, top of the key for three. Stoby got a three. Parker Stoby. He's got nine points, three triples in the game, 55-51. Oh, this is high-octane stuff. And a ball knocked out of bounds by Beaver Dam. Panthers will keep it with 10.07 to go in the second half. These two teams putting on a show here and it's, this is not even the playoffs. That starts next week. And Kreckman in the lane, one hands it up and scores as it rattles home off the rim. 57-51, Oregon. Under 10 minutes to play. Stoby right side, fall away shot. No good off the rim. Diaz the rebound. Here's Diaz at the other end. Fouled. Let's see who they get here. Stoby was trying to block it from behind, but there were, Salatel was there, and, and EJ picked it up. That's his first. Team fouls now are even at four apiece. And at the line, Caden Diaz, where he's 58.3% on the season. First one is good. Diaz averages just under 10 points a game. Three rebounds and two to three assists per game. One more. And the second free throw in and out, no good for Diaz. Jens tracks down the carom. 58-51, so it's a seven-point lead for Oregon. Jens inside the free throw line, sends it out to Stoby beyond the arc, left elbow, and now to call, JT. Fires it high on the right, blank, looking down to Stoby in the corner. Stoby guarded there by Nicholas Jacob. Step back three, yes! Parker Stoby, his fourth. 
from behind the arc. Hits the step back three and it's 58-54. The Oregon lead is at four with exactly nine minutes left. The pass intended for Diaz intercepted call, sends it ahead. Blank giving it right back to JT. He'll drive inside the free throw line, kicks it out right of the circle for Jens. Back to call on the return feed, now up to Jens. Fakes a three, Jens sidearmed it. JT towards the free throw line, finds Blank. He'll send it right sideline for Stoby to Blank in the corner now. He's guarded there by Kreckman. Now Jens takes the lob. Jens up high on the right, looks left, looks right. On the dribble now. And he will give it to Blank. Blank, look out is that one a little wide of call, a little miscommunication call, saved it from going into his own bench. Fires at left corner for Jens. Back to call, call tries a three on the elbow. It is no good off the rim. And the rebound this time for Wolink. Oregon basketball, 58-54. Panthers lead the Golden Beavers. Clock running with 8.02 to go. Now they stop it. And a timeout. 30-second timeout brought to you by Reed by McKinstry's Home Furnishings under the red awning in downtown Beaver Dam. And uh, tell you what, we're going to uh, keep it right here on this 30-second timeout. Again, if you want to send an email before the end of the game, sports at dailydodge.com. Email box is still open. A reminder that tomorrow night we've got girls playoff basketball for you on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaverdam. Tomorrow night, the Beaverdam girls open up their playoff run as they will host Plymouth in a WIAA Division II regional semifinal. Aiden and I will be in the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse for that one. It'll be a 7 o'clock tip-off, our pregame show starting at 6.40 tomorrow night right here on Daily Dodge TV and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Join us for that if you can't make it in person. All right, off the inbounds play. Pass. Freund knocked it out of bounds. They were trying to get it to Carvela in the right block. Freund with good defense. Quick hands, knocks it back out. Wolank will inbound as Oregon will keep possession. And now Wolink sends it in from the near sideline. This is Diaz. Diaz to Wolink. Cutting right baseline shot is up. No good over the rim. Offensive rebound and then falling down. Nolan Erferth and lost it out of bounds. That's a break for the Golden Beavers. As they're going to get it back. So we have 7.48 to go in the ball game. And right now it's 58-54. to 54, Oregon leading Beaver Dam. Parker Blank, pass right side, Salatel, three-point wing on the right side, guarded by Carvela. They go around the horn, Blank, left side now. Pass tipped by Kreckman and going to be stolen. Erferth to Carvela, bounce pass head, Kreckman going in, and he'll slam it home. Kreckman making it 60-54 to in favor of the Panthers with 7.20 to go. Mendoza trying a three ball, that's no good. Rebound for Kreckman. Panthers have it and a six point advantage. Seven minutes and change left in the game. Wolank for three and he buries it right over Mendoza. Grant Wolank. How about that? 63 54. It's a nine point Oregon lead with under seven minutes to go. Mendoza faking a three. Dancing out on the right side now. Here's Cam. Stops near the free throw line, faked a shot, kicks it out to Salatel. Salatel, right baseline drive, sends it up to Cam for three. That's too strong. Off the back of the rim, rebound for Kreckman. Six and a half minutes and counting left in this one. And right now, Beaver Dam trailing by nine. This is Oregon's largest lead of the game. And Beaver Dam's got to get a stop here, and they don't want to let this deficit grow any larger at this late juncture. You know, we're talking with Coach Ladron before the game, and he said, yeah, you know, some people might look at this ball out of bounds. Ed Carvalho lost it out of bounds into his own bench. But uh, Coach Ladron's saying, you know, some people may look at this and say, well, the, you know, there's nothing to play for here because the seedings are already done and the conference championships already decided. What, what do you have to play for? Well, no. Beaver Dam's treating this game all business-like. They... They want to keep the momentum going and the good vibes going into the postseason 
and there's the pride factor and all that. So this is not, this was not a throwaway game as some people might wonder. And it's been, uh, been fun to watch. But the Golden Beavers down nine with 5.49 to go. Stobie for three, in and out, no good. Carvala has the rebound. Lob pass ahead. This is Erfurth letting traffic go by Kreckman. Nice pass down low. Wolling behind the defense, and Wolling scores. They played the high-low game. Nobody on Wolling. Timeout, Beaverdam. Brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaverdam. We're back in one minute. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV, 1430 ESPN. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. As a realtor, there is such joy in driving past one of our clients' houses that is now the place they call home. Be it a first-time home buyer, a relocation to our community, or someone upsizing or downsizing. We are passionate about the place you call home and meeting your wants and needs each step of the way. We sell the houses, you make it a home. Questions? Give us a call. 920-219-9212. Kladowski Real Estate, your trusted real estate advisors. Five minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the ball game. It's 65-54, Oregon on top of Beaver Dam. Off the timeout, Beaver Dam working it ahead, and Parker Blank takes a pass from Parker Stoby. Now sends it to JT Call between the circles, over to Mendoza on the right side. Here's Cam behind the arc. Underhands it to Stoby. Stoby. Pass into the lane, Mendoza under, you know, got through a double team, kicked it out to the corner, and Blank for a three in the corner. Parker Blank, 27.4% from behind the arc, 65-57. Carvalho fell down, lost it as he was going in too fast. To the other Salatella ahead to Mendoza. Mendoza in the lane, hook shot is up off the rim, no. Diaz, and then Mendoza tried to steal it back from Diaz, but we had a foul called with 4.50 to go. A 65-57, eight-point Oregon lead, 4.50 to go in this one. There's Wolling traveling as he tried to go down Interstate 39, but there was too much traffic and he took an extra step. And Beaver Dam will get it back. Still time here, but we're down to 439 remaining. Golden Beavers trailing by eight, 65-57. Call driving left side. Oh, tr tried to go behind the back, and, and then he got, lost the ball briefly, and then he got tied up going to retrieve it. Timeout was called. Actually, he got a hold of it, and they called timeout. Brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings in Beaver Dam. And uh, we'll take a quick 30-second break. Daily Dodge in 1430 ESPN. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. All right, back to live action call inbounding. Four and a half to go. Beaver Dam trailing by eight. Golden Beavers have possession. This is Mendoza to the top of the key for Salatel. Out to Cam in the left corner. Pass over to Blank. Blank on the dribble. His pass is intercepted. It was tipped, and actually the ricochet went right to Caden Diaz. Now here's Grant Wolink into the lane. That's Diaz. It'll Spin move, shot is off the back of the iron, no good, and Mendoza has the defensive rebound. Four minutes to go in the game. Beaver Dam down eight. 
65-57, Oregon leads. Call, baseline drive, tends to the corner. Mendoza up to Salatel, tries a three, it's no good. Rebound, call, tipped it to Mendoza. It's a reload for the Golden Beavers. Mendoza now. Pass to Jens between the circles. Now back to Parker Blank. Blank one hands it to JT Call coming around from the far side. He's up near that center circle area. Now over to Blank on the right side. Lob pass cross court taken by Call. He's going to drive left baseline. Layup in and out. It's no good. Rebound for the Panthers. And Erferth. Lob pass into the block. Shot is up. Shot is in. Wolink. 67-57, so it's a 10-point Oregon lead, 3.09 to go, the clock is running. Here is Salatel, left corner three, in and out, it was halfway down, and it spun out, and the rebound for Kreckman. Now Carvalho, up near the big O at the center of the floor, giving it to Kreckman, he's up there as well. He starts driving left side. Jen's watching him closely. 2.38 and counting left in the game. Kreckman going against Jen's. Jen's sticking with him like glue. Return feed to Carvala. Carvala now guarded by Mendoza and Carvala. Nice pass down to the left doorstep and wide open there was Wolink for another bucket. 69-57 Oregon, 2.15 to play. Well, the Panthers now leading by 12 is number 12, J.T. Call. Tries a three from the left corner. It's no good. Crackman the rebound. Baseball pass ahead. Wolang catches up to it. Got fouled by Mendoza going in as he attempted that reverse layup. Stops the clock with a buck 58 left. Mendoza just picked up his third foul of the game. Sixth team foul of the half. And this is, a, this is two shots here for Wolank. First one is good. Wolank having a big second half. 12 points in the half, 13 in the game. He just had the one free throw in the first half, but he has done big things offensively in the second half. Second free throw, no good. Rebound, Stoby. 70 to 57, Oregon on top. Beaver Dam ball, and this is Stoby. Side arms it to Salatel. EJ out to the corner for Blank. Blank inside the arc, underhands it back to Stoby. He's at, into the lane now, and foul. He got fouled as he went into traffic. So, minute 41 left now, and that foul was on Kreckman, his second team's fifth. <clears throat> Inbound pass taken by Stoby. Now Salatel, deep three. It will go for EJ. 70 to 60. Beaverdam down 10, but only a minute 25 and counting left in the game. Pass was tipped and out of bounds. It should stay with Oregon. It will. Clock stop now with a buck 17 to go. And we're down to the final minute and 17 of this one as Carvala takes the inbound lob from Kreckman, gives it to Wolink, spinning, defender fell down, and Wolink found himself with a wide open path to the basket. 72 to 60, Panthers. Three for Stoby, no good on a line drive. Three under a minute to play now as Wolink got the rebound, throws it ahead. Look out, alley oop, and the dunk for Carvala! Diaz with the alley oop pass. Carvala catches and the flush home to make it 74 to 60. And now 43 seconds left. Mendoza for three, no good. Rebound tipped to Salatel. He puts it up, it's off the rim. No, tried to tip up his own miss, it's no good. And he got fouled with 35.2 seconds remaining. And Beaver Dam getting ready to empty the bench here with 35 seconds left. Salatel's gonna shoot. 
He gets two and the first one is good. Let's see. Got a bunch of subs coming in here. On, well, both teams are emptying the benches. Riley Doyle, Cruz Rohde, Matt Doyle, all coming on. And the second free throw is good for EJ. Now he's going to exit. Nick Krasinski is going to come in. Seventy-four, sixty-two. Just under half a minute to play. So the Panthers going to win the last game of the regular season. There's a pass, and on the left doorstep going in is Hans Kiesau for two. Ten seconds left, 76-62 Panthers. Three ball at the other end. It is no good. Offensive board. Oh, well, thought they had it for a moment, but picked up instead by Hanneman, Carson Hanneman, and he'll just dribble it out as the horn sounds. This one is in the books, and your final score in the final regular season game, Oregon 76, Beaverdam 62, and it is now on to the postseason for both of these squads. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to get you a recap of this one. We'll have some final numbers. We'll see if we can get uh, Tim Ladrin up here for some comments. But right now we're going to take a three-minute break. We're back in three minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. The winter weather can play havoc on your hands and hair. Fear not, the folks at Wonder Nails and Spa has just a ticket for you. Call 887-4374 and let them pamper you. Let them chase away those winter blues. Let's talk hair. Long, beautiful hair. Shine and glint. Whoa, 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 I digress. The team of cost cutters will put a shimmer and shine to your mood, and their retail products are the best in the business. Call 885-0437 today. That's why you hear everyone say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center, and you should too. At Preferred Dental Partners, our core values are more than just something we put on our wall. They're something we live out. It's the President's Day sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed with the last call for all you Hemi engine muscle car enthusiasts. The Hemi engine is going away, but we got a couple of beauties that just arrived for some lucky buyers. Take five grand off a brand new 23 Dodge Charger Daytona RT in B5 Blue or a Challenger RTTA package in the beautiful and iconic Plum Crazy. For you SUV buyers, Jeep Grand Cherokee Limiteds with the black appearance package, only $46,678. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our Silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for Your Home for the best sales, service, and selection. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. We are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. 
Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a Premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show. Back inside Oregon High School, Mike Tronson with you on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. This one has gone final. This Badger Large Conference boys basketball tilt is now in the books and so is the regular season as the Panthers defeat the Golden Beavers. Final score tonight, Oregon 76 and Beaver Dam 62. Our game tonight was brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Cheap Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM and Beaverdam, and White Construction. Well, the Beaver Dam Unified School District is one of the largest employers in the region. Their compensation and benefit packages are among the most competitive in the area. If you have a passion for serving children or know someone who does, please consider applying to be a part of a great team that works together in common purpose on behalf of kids and our community. We've got uh, Tim Ladrin coming up here to join us, and so we're going to uh, give him a headset here and get everything all situated. Let him catch his breath here, too. And yep. Tim, can you hear me okay in there? Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming up. And uh, little, uh, a little tough one, obviously, tonight here at the second. It was tight for a good yeah. chunk of the way, but uh, they seem to pull away at the end here a little bit. Yeah, and as a staff, we were just talking about it. Like, in a way, you sort of feel like it was more about them than us. I think they played really well. Uh, a lot of guys hit shots. They defended well. Obviously, we didn't shoot the ball well the second half um and we you know we got to like six or eight and down six or eight and they felt like we panicked a little bit couple bad shots couple bad turnovers um you know just got a little panicky and um a tough place to play we had a great crowd here a tough environment and a good team and you know even you know coach Sheever said too at the end of the game he said that's the best we've played all year uh, and and you know they I mean, it's a good basketball team, and yeah, I think it's like I said. I think I don't think we played terribly. I think we played a lot of energy. Um, we just we, they kind of ran away from us there at the end. Yeah, I mean, you had four players in double figures, so I wondered if you might not, you know, feel that way, even though you lost the game. Yeah, that it wasn't all bad here. I mean, you like I said, it was it was neck and neck for quite a while. Yeah, they're, they're, Coach Schiebert had them ready to go, and they, and they played really well. And you know, obviously Carvalho is an absolute stud and you gotta you gotta spend a lot of time with him but then their other guys are playing well and um you know they're moving it well they're taking care of the basketball last time we were able to turn them over a ton and this time just didn't seem like we could turn them over as, as much and and we you know defensively you know with you know especially against a team like this with crackman at 6-6 six, six, and, and carvalho at 6-6 six, six, and a couple six three guys out there we have to be able to turn turn teams over because we're not going to win it inside so um we just we weren't able to turn them over as much as we would like um, and then we had a couple, again, a couple forced turnovers, un or unforced turnovers, and we were trying to force passes. And then a couple bad shots in the second half, and they let it, kind of let them run away a little bit. But, um, you know, I thought we battled well. I, again, I, I don't think it was something we played terribly. We just got to clean some things up. Well, you mentioned to me coming into this one that this was not what you would say a th was a throwaway game by any means. You, no. You, this was, this was businesslike, yep. and you wanted to keep the good vibes, the momentum going, yep. even though – you know the seating and all that other stuff's been decided. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I and and I you know and from that standpoint, I think we did. I think we came out, we played to the edge. We we didn't have a bad first five minutes tonight. You know, we we competed really well. We you know we got a couple buckets right out of the gate, and and then they got a little bit of a lead. We came back, took the lead back on them, and you know you just felt like it's going to be that type of back and forth game all night, and um, and then you know one team is going to make a run at the end, and unfortunately it was them. And um, but I yeah I don't think it was anything to do with. Um, you know, not being ready to play or, or a throwaway game or anything like that. I thought we were pretty dialed in right from the get-go. Um, we, we just made a couple uncharacteristic bad plays down the stretch there that let them stretch it out. Uh, certainly not a game that, I don't know what the final was, 16 points or whatever, certainly not like that. You know, certainly a tight game most of the way. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, and you talk about, you know, the fact that you've had an issue at times here with slow starts. Is that going to be a big key going into the postseason? I mean, it's obviously yeah. any game, I guess. But it, if you, if you, it sounds like you made a, a conscious effort to kind of address that a little bit, and that's you want to make sure that that doesn't happen come postseason. Well, we talked about it a little bit, but mm-hmm. we haven't really, you know, stressed it too much with the guys. It's been more with inside the staff and what okay. we're doing with our stuff on the offensive end and changing some things about trying to, you know, you know, how we're running things early in the game, whether it's sets or, or whatever we're doing on offense. And um, tonight was much, tonight was much better, um, you know, and, and that, there were some positives there for sure. And, um, you know, I, that, I, that's not a thing that necessarily, you know, we've kind of joked about it a little okay. bit at times with yeah. the guys, and uh, but never, never really stressed too much with it. It's just more of a staff thing that we need to take care of. We feel like if we get our guys into the right stuff, they'll execute pretty well. 17-7. and seven. Yeah. Number two seed. Yep. Got to like where you're sitting going into the playoffs. Yeah, you know, and and it, and I know this one stinks, and and but you know, you go back to the beginning of the year, and I, you know, again, we talked about this. You're pick six in one publication, or pick seventh in the conference, and one another publication. I remember telling uh, 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 Mr. Gerber in a preseason meeting. I remember telling him, "Hey, listen, if this team, if this team is is in the top four, that would be a great year with how good this conference is, and and it just how loaded it is, and you know, out of the all conference last year." Uh, there was only three seniors in the all-conference last year. There was all juniors in the first team all-conference last year. Everybody had everybody back. And we were we finished in sixth or seventh last year. And so now you take that and, and you say how well we've we've improved and and getting us into a spot where we were, we were punching a little bit for a, for a conference title for a little while there. Lost a couple games here on the back half, but we finished in the top four. Uh, it was, like I said, I thought that was our high-end goal coming into the year. I'm awfully proud of our guys. Um, you know, it's especially how, how difficult this conference was this year with everybody back with for everybody. Um, and then, um, yeah, put the 17 wins is, is a, a great regular season. And uh, I'm certainly proud of the guys and where we're at. Is, is it fair to say then you probably exceeded expectations yeah. in some in some regards? I mean, I think so. I, you know, it, it, you, you know, it, 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 double edged sword, right? I mean, you kind of but yeah, I, I feel like it, you know, we, again, with, with just how many guys were back for everybody this year, for for all the teams, and this, you know, and talk about the lack of height a lot, and it is what it is. It's just who we are. It's fine, um, but um, the way these guys have battled and put themselves in position, and and in, in just about every basketball game, and really won a lot of games um, in, in, in tight competition, and, and and I just, yeah, really really pleased with with, with the season and regular season, 17 wins. Um, either tied for third or in fourth in the conference, and uh, just a a really super effort by our guys this year. Expect, especially with a, a lot of people around, not expecting much out of us. I think we, it, us, our coaching staff, and in our locker room, we expected this. We expected to be in, in this spot. I think a lot of other people did, and I'm proud of our guys for that. Well, now you get a little rest and time to prepare, and then uh, next week Friday, you're at home. Yep. And uh, don't know the opponent just yet, but. Uh, You'll have uh, you. You'll be rested, and you should be well prepared all well that time. Yeah, and we've been really good at home, and and you know having those you know the opportunity to possibly have two games. Obviously, we've got to win Friday night. Um, to have two games is a reward for these guys, and and you know and from here, you know, um, we get a chance to take a look at this, fix the things we need to fix, and uh, they're a great. This is a great test. I mean, like I said, really good basketball team. I think they were picked second in the league coming in. Um, you know, super athletic guys all over the place that can play. And, um, you know, a good, a good warm-up for us going in. Not didn't end the way we wanted to, but I'm pretty happy with our, with our effort and a lot of things we did do and some things we can clean up, obviously. Well, congratulations on a, a very solid regular season. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch, a lot more good than there was yeah. uh, bad. And uh, I'm looking forward to next week, Friday night. We'll be there inside the field house, uh, raring to go for the second season. Yeah, I, I, we're excited for it. No question, is no better time of the year. You know, I don't think um, this is a spot where I feel like we're – coming in off a loss and a bad I think we're playing pretty good basketball I think if we continue to play like this we'll be fine Tim thanks for coming up thanks for all you do for us do appreciate it yep. we'll see you next week buddy. yeah thanks appreciate it all right that's Tim Ladron head coach of Beaver Dam joining us on the post game show Beaver Dam falls tonight here at Oregon 76 62 tell you what let's take another quick break we're back to wrap it up for you right after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam are you ready for peace of mind Chad Guzzi here owner of Air Care and Beaver Dam If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. 
AirCare's total care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well... Insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam with offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. Here at Pizza Ranch, we'd like to thank our Swedish friends for bringing the buffet to America. They called it the smorgasbord, but it was a success anyway. So we started our own buffet and loaded it up with pizza, chicken, sides, salads, and cactus bread. And you can even request any pizza you want anytime you visit. We call it Buffet Your Way, because smorgasbord your way, well, that doesn't rhyme at all. Pizza Ranch. Mmm, mmm. Check out your local Pizza Ranch in Beaver Dam, Watertown, or Waupon, or check out PizzaRanch.com. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all Beaver Dam athletes. While at home watching high school sports, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy comfort studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show. 76-62, your final tonight as Beaverdam falls here in the regular season finale at Oregon. Let's run down the final individual scoring from this one for Victoria's Oregon as they wrap up the regular season 14-10 overall, 7-7 seven seven in the Badger Large. They were paced by Vaughn Carvala, 27 points to lead all scores in the game, 14 in the first half, 13 more in the second, including a couple of thunderous dunks that he had. Vaughn Carvala leads all scorers tonight, 27. Three other players in double figures for Oregon. Grant Wolink with 15. 14 of his 15 came in the second half. He was huge after halftime. 12 points for Henry Kreckman and Caden Diaz with 10 for the Panthers. It was Nicholas Jacob with a pair of threes early, so he finished the game with six points. Ryan Dins, Mason Hoffer, and Hans Kiesau all with two points apiece for the Panthers. Meanwhile, for Beaver Dam, they finished 17-7 overall and 8-6 and in the league. They were led tonight by JT Call. 21 points for JT, but no points after halftime. All 21 came in the first half. 17 for E.J. Salatel. Parker Blank and Parker Stobie both in double figures. Stobie with a dozen. He had four triples. And Parker Blank had two triples and ten points total. Rounding out the scoring for Beaver Dam was Cameron Mendoza with two. As I mentioned, both of these teams have buys in the first round of the playoffs on Tuesday. So Oregon, they're a number eight seed, will open up their playoff run at home a week from tomorrow night, Friday night, March 1st, as they will host number nine seeded Madison East at 7 o'clock. Meanwhile, for Beaver Dam, their first playoff game is also a week from tomorrow night, 
Friday night, March 1st. Beaver Dam in Division Two is a number two seed and will take on either number seven, Sauk Prairie, or number 10, Portage. That'll be next week, Friday night, March 1st, and we'll have that game for you Friday night on Daily Dodge TV and Simulcasting on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Don't forget tomorrow night, speaking of playoffs, we've got girls playoff basketball tomorrow night. The Beaver Dam girls, they had a bye on Tuesday in the first round. They will be in action tomorrow night, a Division II regional semifinal against Plymouth. And we'll have it for you. 7 o'clock is the tip time. That means our pregame show is going to start a little bit earlier at 640. Join us here if you can't make it in person on Daily Dodge TV or simulcasting on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. That's going to wrap it up. We want to thank all of you for being with us tonight. Hope you enjoyed this broadcast, as always. And I do want to thank uh, Jack Wilski back at the 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam Studios for engineering our radio simulcast. Aiden Voigt's here on site. Agent 00 Voigt, they call him. He's my videographer and engineer. Aiden, thank you for all you do. And for Jack. And for Aiden. My name is Mike Tronson saying so long from Oregon. Have a pleasant evening. We'll talk to you again tomorrow night. This has been a Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaverdam Sports presentation. Good night, everybody.